We're talking about circular breathing today. Not yet. And now, welcome to another video. Benvindo video to my Portuguese friends and all people around the world that speak Portuguese. So nice to see you. Today we are talking about circular breathing on the oboe or any other wind instruments. The things that we're going to be talking about pretty much work on other wind instruments, although we have to differentiate. And I have to say, for once, we oboists have the advantage because on the oboe it's actually easier to make than other instruments. Like on the flute, I think it is quite challenging. I know some people do it, but uh, it is not so easy because on the flute you have a lot bigger hole to blow the air in. So it is not so easy, but let's get into it. Let's talk about it. Let's debunk all the myths I'm gonna show you. How you can learn step by step to do it and actually the most important step is to perfect it in a way i think so people don't really see it and that this takes some time but first you need to get how to do it and then after that you can perfect it it's gonna be great you might be somebody who is starting to learn it you're in the right place you might be also somebody who wants to improve it also keep watching and you might learn something new about circular breathing. Let us first discuss what is circular breathing. If you haven't heard of it, it's a technique that allows us to keep playing while we actually breathe through the nose. And this might sound confusing, might sound impossible, but it is actually possible. And it's, it's pretty simple because let's imagine like this, the normal way of breathing air out is with the lungs with the support what we call support as in the normal way of playing the oboe like this but there's also another way just to be using the mouth in the place here around here i'm not really sure it's difficult to actually explain things that happen in the body but it's basically like this so you're basically using the cheeks and maybe a little bit the throat to push the air out and you have limited time there and you have also a very different way of of blowing the air out but it actually is enough to breathe in or even to breathe out because the challenging thing with the oboe is not that we necessarily need more air but sometimes we actually need to exhale the air and this is uh a technique that helps us do that, achieve that. So how can we actually start even understanding how this works? The simplest thing is, imagine, let's, let's do it together. Let's just breathe in through the lungs, breathe out. That's the, that's the normal way. And then we have the other way that's only, for example, like this. It's gonna get a little bit ugly, sorry. But it is basically, if I'm, I'm not even like using the diaphragm or the lungs here. I'm just breathing out like this. And you can try it by just putting some air in the cheeks and pushing it like this with the hands and this has nothing to do try to separate that from the normal way that you are breathing out i hope this makes sense and the next step would be to try to do that that kind of thing and try to breathe in through the nose like this 
so at the same time, in the same time actually, I'm breathing out the air that I have here, I'm breathing in, like so. You can try that. It's funny, it's weird, I know, but it's gonna be fine later on. Nobody's gonna do notice it. And that's, that's the end, that's the end goal. And then after that, I'm gonna show you a very, very handy exercise. You've probably seen it. Let me just get the glass of water. You're not gonna need a glass of water and a straw. It's actually here. Here we go. I haven't done this for a while, so let's see how it goes. I recommend you squeeze a little bit the straw so it resembles more the resistance that we have uh, playing the oboe, the Tanya Reed. And let's try first blowing in the, the normal way with the diaphragm. We're gonna call this the normal way and the other way is the cheek mouth way. Just for the sake of, of, the, of this tutorial. Let's go. Let's try the no first the normal way. In this way, actually, it's it's it is not so much resistance. If if I would actually do it like I would do it on the elbow, this would everything would become a mess here. Let's not do that. Uh, but and then after that, let's try to do only with the mouth. As you can see, there are limitations here because we really don't have that much. Imagine, you can actually feel your cheeks. Later on, on the oboe, I wouldn't recommend that so much. But now for the exercise, let's do it this way. And the next step would be to try to do the following. You are pushing the air out, the cheeks, from the cheeks and mouth and you breathe in. Let's, let's try it. Like so, it's already becoming a mess here. And next step, that's the, that's the tricky part, is trying to switch between both ways. And don't worry, there might be bumps, there might be a little break in between. The important thing is that you get it and with time it will become better if you practice that. Let's try it. I'm even curious what's going to happen. This is very, very useful and um, I really squeeze it almost the whole way. This resembles more the elbow. I think uh, it's easier actually this way. Um, I think actually let's let's go to to the elbow and show you how you can actually start to perfect it there. All right, on the elbow, I think it is good to start with some movement, some scale, or even just a trio. So it's easier. Don't do it on a straight note straight away because this is the most difficult one. Like this, start it on a trio and start, start to change. With me, my goal is really that you don't hear it. You're actually not using too much of the cheeks in the beginning, you can. Uh, but I think the end goal should be something that you really cannot notice. Uh, and not I'm actually not breathing too much air, like I said. It becomes a little bit uncomfortable. We don't need too much air on the oboe. Maybe in other instruments like the clarinet, the clarinet you would need more air. Um, a bass clarinet, you know, it's a lot more air is going in the instrument. On the cor anglais as well, the English horn, you would it would be slightly different. But same principle applies. And if you do it on a straight note, 
later on. Let's see how it is. It's very difficult not to notice it on a straight note. That's why I probably never do it. That's the other thing is using it in a musical in a piece. I think you should always plan where and to find a comfortable way to do it. If it's a slow movement, you can still do it kind of in between notes, like I do it in the Strauss concerto. Uh, for example, You probably even didn't notice why I did it, but I do it whenever I have some kind of movement so I can really cover it up. If I do it on a straight note, it will be a lot more difficult. Another very important thing I want to share with you is how can you, or can you, I didn't believe this is possible, uh, circular breathe while playing articulated passages. And I'm going to demonstrate to you right now how to do that. As you can see, it's also possible and I think you can do it once you develop this technique, once you really get it, once it clicks, you will be able to do it also on, on articulated passages. I remember putting some slurs, but in this situation, actually you don't have any other choice. You have to articulate all the notes and you can actually breathe. Uh, the difference here is you don't have so much time like when you're playing legato but it's still possible so you can take it a step further you can try it out and uh, i'm sure it's going to work out for you now that we discuss how to practice circle breathing how to develop it how to perfect it let's talk a little bit about when to use it this is very important uh, especially if, you, if you're not so experienced the first thing i would say is that circle breathing should not replace the proper normal way of breathing which is so much more important for your playing breathing low through the mouth is a lot better because breathing through the nose actually directs the air a lot higher which is not so good for the breathing technique on the elbow and the second point will be use a circular breathing only for musical reasons, if you really need it, like for example, the Strauss Oval Concerto is almost written as it is for string players. Uh, sometimes you don't really have a place to breathe, or if you breathe, you feel almost as you are dis disturbing the lines a little bit. So, in some instances, it is very useful to have that also in other pieces that really the line goes on and on and on and on and then you can you can use that but really use circle breathing only in the places where you are not able to to do it the normal way and then at the same time I think it's very important as you are practicing circle breathing don't neglect don't forget to practice also your proper way of breathing which is a lot more important and as for other things that we talked on this channel, like double tonguing, articulation, and things like that, every technique sits a lot easier on an already very good support, very good breathing technique. So circular breathing is not an exception. If you have developed a very good breathing technique, it will be easier. It will be something that will give you some extra 
abilities in places where you need it. But if you don't need it, you don't have to use it. And with that all said and done, please subscribe, like if you like the video. I hope you learned something. I will be very happy to see you in the next one. Leave comments below if you have any questions. Don't forget, you can sign up for one-on-one -on -one lesson with the platform called Play With The Pro. I'll be very happy to meet you and work on your individual needs. And I will see you in the next one. I'm gonna have a little gin tonic here. I'm just kidding. I, just, I really just like the exercise.